Hey, what's going on, everybody? Verdi here with another Raid Shadow Legends video. So today we're going to talk about Silly and the Lucky, a brand new Banner Lords Legendary Fusion. He looks really cool. I just fused him today, and I'm pretty happy about it. So for his abilities, he has attacks one enemy two times. Each hit has 35% chance of placing a 30% decreased speed debuff for two turns. Each hit also has a 35% chance of stealing 30% of the target's current turn meter. This is a really cool move. For PvP, it could be useful on Spider as well. And also for Fire Knight progression. Obviously, he's not the best on Fire Knight 20 because he's magic affinity. But getting through Fire Knight and getting to Fire Knight 20, he could be very, very helpful. On his A2, Inflict Misfortune, attacks one enemy, has an 85% chance of placing a block cooldown debuff for four turns, also has a 35% chance of placing a block cooldown skills debuff on all other enemies for one turn. This is also a very cool move, I like it for PvP, and it's also useful in dungeons because if, it, if this lands, he's going to block the enemies out of their skills, and on Dragon that can be useful because Tyrell won't use his defense down. And on Ice Golem, this could be useful because on Wave 2, the Terror Beasts, I think that they're called, won't be able to use their Reflect Damage move. On the A3, we have Headringer. Attacks one enemy, has a 75% chance of placing a Stun Debuff for one turn. Has a 25% chance of placing the Stun Debuff for two turns instead of stealing 50% of the target's turn meter. Resets the cooldown of this skill if the target is killed. This is definitely a really cool ability. When booked, it has a 100% chance to stun, so I think this is very useful in PvP and in PvE in dungeons because stunning enemies is obviously great. Also, this is going to be very good in Faction Wars as well. For his passive, a very cool ability as well, places a one of the following buffs on this champion for two turns at the start of each turn. A 50% increased attack buff, a 30% increased crit damage buff, a 30% increased crit rate buff, a 25% strengthen buff, or a block damage buff. This is definitely also very useful. He either buffs himself to do more damage, or he has block damage so that he cannot be attacked or killed. Well, he could be attacked, but he won't take any damage. For his passive, increases ally attack in all battles by 25%. This is not bad. His hit points are a little bit low, but he does have very high attack and defense for an attack champion. So let's go ahead and take a look at his artifacts. I put a Relentless set on him, damaging one with attack, crit damage. Also went for some speed and accuracy, so that way he can land his debuffs. We ended up with 255 crit damage. We're a little bit over on crit rate, but that's the best I could do. And then we have 220 speed and 4100 attack. For his skills, I wanted to fully book him, but it is very expensive to do so. It does take 15 books. I only had nine, so I used those nine, and I, they kind of landed where I wanted them. I did want this damage here, but I will book them all the way when I get more books. For his masteries, we went with attack, or with offense, and support. We went with the regular critical rate and critical damage here. Increases damage inflicted by 8% for the first hit on each enemy. That's mostly for PvP. And then down here, I got crit damage 20%. We also got Evil Eye, Lore of Steel for a little bit of extra stats, and some accuracy along the way. Okay, so we can go ahead and run a couple of PvP matches. I pretty much just took Rotos out and placed him in Rotos' spot, so let's see how he does. Alright, so he has Strengthen. That's pretty cool. Alright. So that reset, because we killed. And we can go ahead and hit again. He is pretty... Mountain King has a little bit better stats than him. But see, if he doesn't kill somebody, he stuns them, making them completely worthless. Definitely very, very useful in PvP. Alright, let's go ahead and fight this team. 
I haven't been doing a lot of PvP, so I am sitting here in the middle of gold 4, so it's not necessarily too difficult. But you can see what he does and why he could be useful. 82k hit there. He's got a little bit of whirling. Right. Oh, we got an extra turn from the, from the Relentless. So on Rotos, because of his passive... Oh, I didn't take half of his health away, so it didn't activate. But if his passive does activate, the, he will get the extra turn and the stun will get absorbed. But he still is not getting the extra turn, so he's definitely very useful against Rotos as well. All right, let's refresh the page, see if we can get anything else interesting here. Okay, we can go ahead and fight another Rotos. So Madame is a threat, so we're going to take care of her. Get rid of Monster. <coughs> we can attack Arbiter. And the decreased move. The decreased turn meter on the on his abilities is also very nice. Alright, so let's go ahead and run him in Dragon. We can kind of just run him here as a DPS. We'll run Roller Guard to kind of compare. Roller Guard is probably going to do a lot more damage. But if I didn't have Roller Guard here doing all the damage, and he was the only DPS you had, he would stun, and he would play decreased speed. As you see there, he's definitely very helpful on Dungeon Waves. When he does spread the block cooldowns, it's also very nice because it allows us to, it allows the enemies to not do any moves, especially with Tyrell defense down here is one of the biggest problems for people. And he could, with a little bit of RNG, help you get through it. Sometimes when you're just trying to beat the stages, you can manual it or whatever it is that you have to do to beat it. And then you can work on farming it and perfecting it later. But. He's definitely a very cool champion. And I honestly think he's useful pretty much everywhere. He could also be good on Spider with the decreased turn meter and stuff. I'm sure that would require... I tried him out on Spider. And... Because of my actual team and I have miscreated monster and stuff, it wasn't really showcasing what he could do. So I'm actually looking forward to maybe using him when I'm doing an account upgrade. And somebody's struggling with Spider to see how much he could actually help. All my champions are too built up for him to actually make a huge impact. So 687,000 damage. It's nothing too great on the damage part, but he also has utility, and he didn't really get any extra turns. Roller Guard is obviously a hit points based attack champion, so the more hit points the enemy has, the more damage you're going to do. So it's going to be hard for him to out damage roll a guard unless he is gaining a lot of extra turns with the relentless so we can go ahead and run ice golem as well i like him on ice golem too stunning the ads is very cool on the boss and the block cooldowns as i was saying before can help on the waves Hundred fifty two k hit there so with decreased defense and weaken he does hit very hard with that big lance. I love it. <laughs> He's just smacking fools. So if we targeted here, we could have targeted one of the terror beasts and he could have and he could have stunned them. But here we go. Block cooldowns on everyone. Perfect. Now they can't use it. Yeah, I think he works great. He's awesome. Definitely 
a really, really cool champion. I like his aesthetics too, though, with the whole St. Patrick's Day theme and everything. Plarium did a pretty good job with that. C block cooldowns and block cooldown skills on him as well, plus the turn meter reduction that he can get from his abilities. Like I said, he is pretty much useful everywhere. Alright. So yeah, decreased speed, so they're never going to get a turn. I mean, we are killing them pretty fast. But look, 177k hit. That's very respectable. 205k hit. 133 on the boss. Yeah, I definitely I definitely like this champion very much. So here you go, 1.3 1.3 million damage. He does really well on Ice Golem. If you're having difficulties with Ice Golem, I think he can definitely be the answer for you to have a more consistent run or to just have a faster run in general because he is awesome. So we can go ahead and take a look at his artifacts one more time. He's wearing a Relentless set with 220 speed, 4100 attack, 255 crit damage. He also has 219 accuracy. If you're not looking for the debuffs and just looking for the damage, you could put an attack banner on, but I don't think that's the, that's a good idea because you definitely want to land those debuffs because that's why he is so useful because of his utility. He's not just a damage dealer. He also has a lot else that he brings to the table. As I mentioned before, his skills aren't fully booked because I didn't have enough books. If we go in here, I am completely out. So I can't put any more in, but as soon as I get more books, I'm going to fully book him because I actually do like this champion. And lastly, we can take a look at his masteries again. We're going with offense and support. Evil Eye is an important one. Laura Steel for extra stats. And then Ruthless Ambush. Damage inflicted by 8% for the first hit on each enemy. This makes him do a lot more damage as well. And then crit damage, crit rate, crit damage along the way. Pretty much a regular DPS mastery. So yeah, I think that about does it for this champion guide. Please leave a like and a subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one. Peace.